Hey everyone, Jamie here from technicalcafe.com. Welcome to your 21st HTML tutorial. In the last tutorial we talked about what divs were and how we can create them in HTML and also how we can use them to style our web pages and make them look a little bit different uh, and also make them look a little bit nicer as well. Um, so something else we also talked about in the last tutorial was how we can use CSS code to style our divs. And um, So this tutorial is going to be a little bit different than the last tutorial. We're not going to be talking about divs anymore or uh, really creating a different web page styles, but rather we're going to be talking about frames and how, what they are and how we can use them to display multiple web pages within the same browser. So uh, as you'll notice right here, we actually have two frames, and uh, you can have a, as many frames as you want to. Um, you can just declare how many they are, how big they are, uh, and stuff like that within the code, uh, which you'll see in a little bit. But basically, frames allow you to display multiple web pages within one browser window. And as you can see here, we have w3schools.com with the frames uh, web page up here, because this is a frames tutorial. And now uh, we also have technicalcafe.com, because I figured since it's a technical cafe tutorial, uh, we'll just throw the blog up there. So. Uh, basically, this is what frames are, and just a quick note, um, the W3Schools uh, webpage says don't expect frames to be supported in future versions of HTML, so uh, I'm not sure whether or not frames are still supported in HTML5, which is the newest version of HTML, um, but I figured it's just still a good thing to know whether or not it's supported, and um, it's just something interesting to learn and it'll improve the HTML knowledge here. So uh, let's just first talk about the frames a little bit uh, on this page. Uh, we have two frames, and is there actually... Uh, Two, two frames that you can actually resize. Uh, you can either resize it this way, or we can resize it this way. And um, there's actually code that you can use to, to uh, prevent that from happening. And uh, you can also actually display the frames uh, horizontally or in rows instead of in columns here. Uh, so it would just be one frame on the top taking up 50% and the other frame taking up 50%, or whatever uh, dimensions you specify. So now let's take a look at what the code looks like to create this. So we'll come in here, and it's actually 14 lines of code, including three lines of space. So it's actually uh, 11 lines of code. So it's not too difficult to create frames. Um, so uh, let's just take a look at what we have here. We have our HTML tags, and if you'll notice, under the HTML tags, we don't actually have a body tag where you usually expect it to be. Uh, instead, the body tag is right here, uh, and we have a paragraph within the body tag, and that's actually nested under the no frames tag. And what the no frames tag does is it actually tells the browser uh, that if the browser does not support frames, like maybe an older browser if someone's using an old computer, or maybe if uh, someone doesn't have frames enabled or their browser doesn't support frames, um, it'll tell the no frames tag says, okay, there's no frames, so let's just display this text instead of the uh, frames that we have here. And actually right here is the code that we're using to put the frames on the page. So you'll notice that we have our frame set opening tag and our frame set closing tag, similar to what you'd have in maybe a list or the tables or uh, maybe a form or something like that. And then the, uh, we have the individual frame tags disp displaying the um, frames. Uh, and this is basically what the frames are. So we have the URL here and the URL here for our frames that we have displayed here. So uh, let's delete this code here and we'll uh, start fresh and see what we can do. So let's just refresh here. We have our empty canvas here. And one thing I just want to point out within the, uh, the frames thing here, uh, sometimes when you refresh the browser window, and you might see this in a second, um, it doesn't refresh what you have for the frames, so you might want to just uh, go over to Firefox, or uh, Notepad++ rather, hit run and hit launch in Firefox if things aren't refreshing and looking the way you'd expect them to. Um, I figured this out when I was playing with it a little bit before the tutorial, so uh, I'm not sure why that is, but it's just something uh, that I noticed happened. So you can just relaunch it and it'll everything should be loaded the way you uh, coded it to load. So uh, let's just create a basic shell of our web page here. We'll say uh, HTML. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new frame set. So in order to create a new frame set, we have our uh, two set. We have a set of tags, which is our frame set opening and frame set closing tag. Uh, so we'll, that's just frame set and a closing frame set. And now uh, this is just like uh, maybe a form or a, a table or something like that. So anything that goes between here is going to be a part of the frame set, and, uh, and the frames are basically going to be defined here. So our frames are a part of our frame set, so they're nested within there. So uh, let's just save that and take a look, and you'll still notice that nothing happens. And that's because we haven't actually defined how many frames we want or uh, what our frames are going to be pointing to. So uh, let's actually come over here, and you can actually, like I said before, display frames horizontally or vertically. Um, so in this tutorial, we're going to start off displaying them vertically, and then I'll show you how to display them horizontally. It's a, it's a quick change. Um, so what we're going to do for that is, for vertical frames, we're going to be using the calls attribute, which stands for columns, similar to uh, in a table. And then we're just going to say calls equals and then some parameters uh, within here. So it's just going to be calls equals and then uh, some quotation marks. So what we're going to be doing is, since we're going to be having two frames, we're going to have them each take up about half of the web page or the half of the browser. 
So um, it's going to be 50%. So one page is going to be in here, 50%. The other page is going to take up the other 50%. So um, we're going to do that by saying 50. And then we're going to use the percent key, so shift 5. And then we're going to put a comma, and then we're going to include another another 50%, or defining what the second frame is going to take up. So we'll say 50, and then percent. And if you have more than uh, two frames, if you have three frames, you can just keep going and say, uh, let's say 25%, or 20%. So this one would have to be uh, 30%, and then you'd have a full uh, 100%. So uh, this one would take up the most, least, least over here, and then second most there. So uh, for this, we're just going to be doing two. Though it is possible to do more, just uh, keep adding on and add more frames. So now that we've defined our frames and how big they're going to be, uh, we'll just come over here and refresh. And you'll notice that still nothing happened. And that's because we haven't actually put any frames on the page. So in order to do that, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a frame tag. And in order to do that, we just come over here and we just say frame. And uh, there's no closing tag to this like in the frame set. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we're just going to throw in a little slash there. Uh, just a good convention, though. I'm not sure that's really needed there anyway. So now that we have our frame defined, we can just hit save, come over and refresh, and you'll notice that we have uh, one frame over here and a second what looks like a frame but really isn't because we actually don't have the frame. So uh, this is displaying w3schools.com, and this is what I was talking about earlier, how you're going to want to reload the whole frame. Um, so Because we don't have a website specified or web page in here that's specified, so uh, I have a feeling it's taking it from what we had previously. So if we just hit run and then launch in Firefox, it'll just uh, give us an empty frame here. And if we view the source, you'll notice that we have the same exact code that we have within Notepad++. So let's get back in here and let's add a web page to here. So in order to add a web page to our frame, we can actually do it uh, similar to how we can do a link or an image. Uh, we can have an internal web page, like a, a web page that we have on our server in the same directory or a different directory, um, like if we're linking to a, another page within our website. And in order to link to any web page, we just say source or src equals and then some quotation marks. And uh, we're going to be linking at first as just as an example to the divs web page that we created from the previous tutorial. So we'll say dot slash divs dot html. And this is just referencing the same folder, the divs uh, web page that we have on our desktop. So if we hit save, come over here and refresh, or if maybe we reload, launch in Firefox, you'll notice that here is our divs web page that we created in the previous tutorial. Um, it's pretty simple, but it's uh, still a web page to show you what we can do. Um, but just like our example, we're going to be using the W3Schools web page. So if we come over here and we just paste in our W3Schools link, or you can paste in whatever website you want to do or type in whatever, uh, we'll save that, come over here and refresh. You'll notice it still doesn't load, so uh, back to launching it. So here's our W3Schools website. So now we get to do the same thing to create the, uh, the Technical Cafe blog that we have over here. So in order to do that, we're just going to create another frame tag. So frame and then slash there just to give it a little bit of a closure there. And we're going to say src equals and http colon slash slash technicalcafe.com. So if we can save this and uh, launch it again in Firefox, you'll notice that this is basically what we had for our example uh, at the beginning of the, of the tutorial. Uh, we can scroll around within our frames, we can resize our frames uh, either way. So this is uh, how you go about creating frames in uh, HTML. So now one thing I want to mention is, let's say you don't want the users to be able to resize the frames. There's actually some code you can do to uh, prevent this from happening, and that's uh, actually an attribute of the frame tag. So when we come over here, in the, uh, all we need to do to add the attribute that we need to add is just no resize equals, and then we're just going to type in no resize. So the no resize attribute equals no resize. So what that's going to do is it's going to prevent users from uh, actually resizing the, um, the frame. So if we go over here and launch it again in Firefox, you'll notice that now users cannot click on this and drag it uh, like they previously were able to. Um, so that's just if you don't want the users to be able to defy, uh, re re if you don't want the users to be able to uh, resize. Sorry about that. Your frames, uh, you can do that. So another thing we're going to do. And uh, we'll just include this one over here too. No resize equals no resize. And we'll just save that there just to have a, it uniform throughout the two frames. So let's say that you wanted to, instead of have vertical columns, you wanted to have rows of frames. Uh, well, you can do that by typing in, just changing columns to rows. So if we save that and we launch this again in Firefox, You'll notice that we have 50% of our uh, web page is w3schools.com on the top half, and the other 50% is Technical Cafe on the bottom. And uh, you can't resize it because we included our no resize equals no resize attribute. So 
uh, that's basically how you go about doing that. So basically, this is uh, how you create the actual frames. But let's say the browser doesn't support frames, so the user uh, doesn't have frames enabled, and maybe they're using a really old browser or something like that. Well, there's actually some code that we type in that we can that will display to the user if their browser doesn't support frames, and uh, that's why we don't have the body in here. So what we do is we type in uh, we use the no frames tag, and that's just it has an opening and closing like a form or a, a table or a list or something like that. So we say no frames, and then we have our closing no frames. So whatever is in here is what's going to be uh, displayed to the user should their browser not display frames or should maybe their browser have a setting that allows them to uh, disable frames. This is what's going to be displayed to the user. So uh, we can put our body tag in here. And I just nested this to make it look a little bit better. So um, if we had the body tag actually outside uh, or right here where we would usually expect it, the frames wouldn't load properly and, uh, or they wouldn't load at all and you just have a blank web page. Uh, so that's not what we want. So uh, inside our body tag, we're just going to put, uh, I'm just going to put a paragraph. And in this paragraph, I'm just going to say, uh, this will be displayed if the browser doesn't support frames. So if we save that, come over here and rerun this in Firefox, you'll notice that our frames display because my browser actually supports frames, and many of the browsers, or if not all of the major browsers nowadays, would support frames. Um, but some browsers, if a user may be using an old computer, or maybe if they disabled frames, if their browser has a setting for that, um, what would actually be displayed would be this. And now just remember that the body tag actually has to be within the no frames tag, otherwise uh, the frame set will have an error. And I'll show you what that would look like in a second. If we just delete this, and we put in our slash body over here where you'd normally find them, and we save, and we relaunch this in Firefox, you'll notice that this is what we have. And if we view the page source, uh, you'll notice that it's, it, the page source is showing up, but the frame set isn't showing up. So uh, the frame set can't be within the body tags, otherwise it won't show up. So let's just uh, fix that error. Okay, there we go. I just uh, undid it. So we'll just relaunch this in Firefox again. And uh, this is our code for our frames here. Um, just a couple things you might want to note again is that when working with frames, you're probably going to have to relaunch it, otherwise it might not work. Um, you can set whether or not you want the user to be able to uh, resize the frames and whatnot. And you can actually, uh, just another thing, for the size of frames, you can actually choose if you want them to be in pixels or in percentages. Um, I'm just using percentages because it's easier to visualize how much you want. And let's say, for example, you wanted to add a third frame. So we'll say frame source equals, uh, we'll say google.com. And we save that and relaunch it. Uh, you can do so. Just uh, We'll just change this to 25%. And uh, another thing I might want to point out to you is that when you're using frames and you want to define a third frame of maybe a, a size that you don't know if you're using some complicated maybe uh, sizes or you don't want to do the math, you can just hit asterisk and it'll allow you to, it'll basically tell the frame to display in whatever's left. So uh, 50 and 25 or 75 and the other, whatever's left will be 25 pixels so it'll, or 25%. So it'll display the third frame in the 25%. So if we save that and run it again, you'll notice that uh, they, these two are equal, in equal, equal in size, and even if you resize the browser window, uh, they'll still be equal in size. And that's because this is just displaying whatever's left. This is 25%, and this is uh, 50%. So, uh, and also you'll notice that when you reload the frames, they load in sequential order. So this one, then this one, and then this one, uh, which appears empty, but I'm pretty sure it's not, or at least it shouldn't be. Um, so basically, this is how you do, go about using frames in HTML. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section, or you can uh, contact me on the contact page of technicalcafe.com. And uh, thank you for watching, and have a great day.